The book we're reading is Coco's Kitten. It's written by Dr. Francine Penny Patterson with photographs by Ronald H. Cohn. Some questions you might have about this book from the cover. Who is Coco? Is Coco the gorilla? What's happening here? Is that gorilla holding a kitten? Why? Do gorillas like kittens? Aren't kittens afraid of gorillas? We'll talk about parts of the book you may not have seen before. Likely, you can find the cover, the title page, and a table of contents. This book, Coco's Kitten, has no table of contents, the list of chapters within it. It does, however, have parts that you may not have seen before, a dedication, a preface, and an epilogue. A dedication is whom the book is written in memory of. If you open to the page after the title page, you'll find the dedication. It's dedicated to the memory of all ball. Turn the pages of your book until you find the word preface. A preface comes at the beginning of a book. Often it does not tell you anything about the story, but gives you background information that you might find important. Preface. Animals are capable of telling us about themselves if we can find the right way to ask them. In 1971, I was working on my graduate school project, testing gibbons to see if they could recognize themselves in mirrors. It was during my study at the San Francisco Zoo that I first saw Coco. She was just three months old and been separated from the other gorillas because of an illness. She was quite sickly and zoo officials were afraid she might die. Coco needed someone to take care of her. She needed a mother. Around that same time, I attended a lecture about a chimpanzee who had learned to communicate in American Sign Language, ASL for short. ASL, used by approximately 300,000 deaf Americans, is a language in which hand, arm, body, and facial gestures represent words. After four and a half years of instructions, the chimpanzee could sign 132 words. I was very impressed. I wanted to do that kind of work, too. I asked the zoo director if I could work with Coco. At first, he said no. He was afraid that I would work with her for a few weeks and leave. That would be bad for the baby gorilla. When I told him that I was willing to spend four or five years with Coco, the zoo director gave his consent. I immediately changed my project. I would study the language abilities of animals with Coco as my subject. I would try to teach her sign language. It was the first time this kind of study had ever been attempted with a gorilla. That was 14 years ago. The language project that I began in 1972 has become my life's work. Today, Coco knows about 500 words and uses over 100 different ones every day. She is able to communicate how she feels, what she wants, even who she is. When Coco was asked whether she was an animal or a person, Coco answered, fine animal gorilla. Over the years, I've watched Coco grow up. As a scientist, I've documented every phase of her development. As a parent, I have cared about and for her and have been proud of her every accomplishment. There were many times that Coco surprised, enlightened, and inspired me but nothing prepared me for how Coco reacted when a small, gray, tailless kitten came to live with us. This is the story of Coco and her kitten, All Ball. It's a story in which Coco the gorilla tells us about herself in a language that expresses love, anger, sorrow, and joy. Okay, now we know a few things. Thanks to the preface, we know who Coco is. We also know some other things. We know that Coco knows ASL, American Sign Language. 
we also know that Coco had a kitten named Allball. There are some things that we don't yet know. They are in the main part of our text. Careful readers can make accurate predictions about texts. Pause this video and reread or listen again to the preface and make some predictions about what you think might happen in Coco's story. What clues did you find? From the words being used, anger and sorrow, this may not only be a happy story. Coco's full name is Hanabiko, which is Japanese for fireworks child. She was born on the 4th of July. Every year I have a party for Coco with cake, sparkling apple cider, and lots of presents. Coco knows what birthdays are. When asked what she does on her birthday, Coco answered, eat, drink, get old. Three days before Coco's party, I said, I'm going shopping today. What do you want for your birthday? Cereal there. Good there, drink, Coco signed. But what presents do you want, I asked. Cat, answered Coco. Later, she repeated, cat, cat, cat. I wasn't surprised that Coco asked for a cat. I've been reading to Coco for many years, and two of her favorite stories have been Puss in Boots and The Three Little Kittens. Coco gets very involved in the stories I read her. When reading the story of the three little kittens who lose their mittens, Coco sees their mother is angry and th that the kittens are crying. Mad, Coco signs. In this picture, you can see Coco giving the ASL sign for the word cat. You can see her using her fingers to show the cat's whiskers. Coco loves picture books. Gorilla books are her favorites. Cat books are next. She likes to go off on her own with a book to study the pictures and to sign to herself. On her birthday, I gave Coco the usual assortment of presents, apple juice, some special fruits and nuts, and a baby doll. I didn't want to give Coco a stuffed toy because I knew she'd eventually destroy it. The only durable toy cat I could find was in a mail order catalog, and I ordered it right away. It was made of cement and covered with vinyl and black velvet. I chose it because it looked real and it was sturdy, gorilla-proof. The toy cat didn't arrive in time for Coco's birthday, so I decided to save it for Christmas. What does the word durable mean? Can you tell from the context what durable means? Does it mean delicate? Does it mean long-lasting? Does it mean gorilla-proof? In December, I made a list for Coco. I drew about 20 pictures, fruits, nuts, vegetables, dolls, combs, and blankets. Every year, Coco gets a stocking and lots of presents. She loves Christmas. What do you want for Christmas? I asked as I showed Coco the pictures. Coco carefully studied the booklet. Then she pointed to a doll, nuts, and a cat. I bought Coco some nuts and a new doll. I wrapped the toy cat and put it with the rest of her presents. Pause here and make another prediction about our text. Do you think Coco will like the cement cat? Why? The cover of this book shows Coco with a real kitten. Do you think Penny will give Coco a real kitten? What makes you say that? What things concern you about either Coco or her kitten? 
Penny picked a cement cat rather than a stuffed toy because she felt Coco would destroy it. How do you think Coco will treat a live kitten? Write down your answer now. On Christmas morning, Coco ate her cereal and opened her stocking. It was filled with nuts. Coco threw the nuts aside and went to her next present. Coco unwrapped a doll. That stink, Coco signed. Then came the velvet cat. That red, she signed. Coco often uses the word red to express anger. Coco was very upset. She started running back and forth, banging on her walls. She was doing display charges past me. They were angry, angry charges. It is natural for gorillas to display when frightened or in great danger. They run sideways, pound their chests, then go down on all fours and run back and forth. But this was Christmas, usually a happy day for Coco, and she was with people she loved. What do you think Coco is feeling? How can you tell? Pause here to make an inference about how Coco is feeling. An inference is an educated guess about what is happening in the story based on clues you read in the text. Make an inference about how Coco is feeling now. Later in the day, Barbara, a friend who'd known Coco since she was a baby gorilla, arrived. That looks like a black cat, Barbara said to Coco. Would you show it to me? Coco did not answer. She pulled a blanket over her head. Could I see it? Barbara asked. Coco pulled a rag over the toy cat, then tossed it in the air. Cat that, Coco signed. Please let me see it, said Barbara. Coco gave her a toy dinosaur instead. I finally understood Coco's strange behavior. She was unhappy with her Christmas present. I had made a mistake. Coco did not want a cement and velvet toy cat. Coco wanted a real cat. Coco wanted a pet. Things don't always happen quickly where we live. Every day is full of its own activities. So it was almost six months later when Karen, one of my assistants, arrived with three kittens. The kittens had been abandoned by their mother and raised by a dog, a Cairn Terrier. Karen showed the kittens to Coco. Love that, Coco signed. In this picture, you can see Coco giving the ASL sign for love her arms crossed as though hugging something. As we showed Coco the kittens, she gave each one her blow test. When Coco meets a new animal or person, she blows in their face. I think she's trying to get a better scent. When she blows at a person, she expects them to blow back. Maybe she expected the kittens to blow back too. The first kitten was smoky gray and white. Coco's blow test took him by surprise. The second kitten was a tailless gray tabby. He was also startled by the blow test. The third kitten, a brown tabby, did not react at all. After the blow test, Coco seemed to have made some judgments about the kittens. Which one do you want? We asked. That, signed Coco, pointing to the tailless tabby. I am not sure why Coco picked the gray tabby as her favorite. I never asked her. Perhaps it was because he didn't have a tail. A gorilla has no tail. That night, all three kittens went home with Karen. Two days later, the kittens came back for another visit. Coco was happy to see them. Visit love tiger cat, Coco signed. First, she picked up the smoky gray and white one. Then Coco took the tailless tabby and carried him on her thigh. After a while, she pushed him up on the back of her neck. Baby, Coco signed. She cradled the tabby in her legs and examined its paws. Coco squeezed and the kitten's claws came out. Cats do scratch, Coco signed. Coco love. What will you name the kitty, I asked. All ball, Coco signed. Yes, I said, like a ball. He has no tail. Ball stayed overnight as a visiting kitten. By the end of the week, Ball was a permanent member of our household. Coco had her kitten at last. 
For the first few weeks, Ball lived in my house. Every evening at six o'clock, I would take Ball to Coco's trailer for an evening visit. I carried the kitten in my pocket as I prepared Coco for bed. Coco soon grew accustomed to this routine. What happens at night, I asked. All Ball, signed Coco. Right, I said. Ball visits you at night. When he was older, Ball snuck into Coco's trailer by himself. It worried me in the beginning. I did not know how Coco would treat the kitten unsupervised. As it turned out, Coco was always gentle. Ball was never afraid of her. Kittens should not be separated from their mothers until they're at least six weeks old. Poor Ball was abandoned by his mother at birth, which might have accounted for some of his faults. Ball was an unusual cat. He was very aggressive. He would go up to people and bite them for no reason. He would bite Coco, too. Cat bite. Obnoxious, Coco signed, but she never struck back. Coco did not like to be scratched or bitten, but she loved Ball in spite of all his naughty behavior. Tell me a story about Ball, I said. Coco loved Ball, she signed. The very first time she picked him up, she tried to tuck him in her thigh. That's where mother gorillas put their infants. Older babies are carried on their mother's backs. Coco tried this with Ball, too. Coco was a good gorilla mother. She combed and petted Ball to keep him clean. She also examined his eyes, ears, and mouth to make sure he was healthy. It was Coco who discovered Ball's ear mites. Ball was often a topic of conversation during Coco's lessons. Love visit, Coco signed when Ball and I arrived for a morning lesson. Ball, I said. Trouble, signed Coco. Love. Coco seemed to enjoy her conversations about her kitten. This dialogue took place between Coco and a research assistant named Janet. I'll give you some grapes if you tell me about Ball, the cat, Janet said. Soft, Coco signed. What kind of animal is he? Janet asked. Cat, 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 Coco answered. Do you love Ball? Soft, good. Cat, cat, Coco signed. In addition to sign language, art is another way I test Coco's perceptions. Ball lay with a green toy on an orange towel. I gave Coco a canvas and some paints and asked her to draw Ball. Coco had ten colors to choose from. First, she picked black for Ball's body. Next, she picked orange for the towel and green for the toy. What about Ball's eyes, I asked. Coco picked tan. Coco loves to play games. Her favorite are chase, blow it, and tickle. Coco likes to be tickled, and she thinks others will like it too. Tickle, Coco signed to Ball when they were lying on the floor together. Ball was not a good tickler, nor did he like being tickled. So Coco and I pretended. I tickled Coco while carrying the kitten in my hand. Coco thought this was very funny. Chase, blow it, enjoy, Coco signed to Ball. Chase is similar to tag. Players run back and forth and chase each other. This is a popular game among gorillas in the wild. But Ball never quite caught on to Chase. Coco did not realize that kittens don't necessarily enjoy gorilla games. Coco did understand that kittens like warmth, affection, and attention, and Coco supplied plenty. On a foggy December morning, one assistant told me that Ball had been hit by a car. He had died instantly. I was shocked and unprepared. I didn't realize how attached I had grown to Ball, and I had no idea how the news would affect Coco. The kitten meant so much to her. He was Coco's baby. I went to Coco at once. I told her that Ball had been hit by a car. She would not see him again. Coco did not respond. I thought she didn't understand, so I left the trailer. Ten minutes later, I heard Coco cry. It was her distress call, a loud, long series of high-pitched hoots. I cried, too. Three days later, Coco and I had a conversation about Ball.
I'd like you to make another inference. How does Coco feel about the death of All Ball, her kitten? Pause now and write down some notes about your answer. Do you want to talk about your kitty, I asked. Cry, Coco signed. Can you tell me more about it, I asked. Blind, she signed. We don't see him anymore, do we? What happened to your kitty, I asked. Sleep, cat, Coco signed. A few weeks later, Coco saw a picture of a gray tabby who looked very much like Ball. She pointed to the picture and signed, cry, sad, frown. It was an unhappy time. What words does Coco use to describe how she feels about losing all ball? Read between the lines in the text. Try to see if you can tell what it is that's going on. So what do the words sleep and blind mean to Coco? Does Coco really mean that the kitten is asleep? Does Coco really mean she can't use her eyes to see? News of All Ball's death traveled quickly. We received thousands of letters. People of all ages wrote to us and expressed their sympathy. Some sent cards, others sent photographs, and many children created pictures. They all had one message, that Coco should have a new kitten. As we approached Christmas, I wanted to get Coco a new kitten. I had no idea how difficult that would turn out to be. On December 20th, Barbara asked Coco, what would you like for Christmas? Cat, cat, tiger cat, was Coco's reply. We heard of a Manx who was soon expecting a litter. We waited weeks until we discovered that the cat was just getting fat. Christmas came and went. In January, I showed Coco a picture of three kittens. One had a long tail, one had a short tail, and one was tailless. When you get another kitty, what kind would you like, I asked. That, Coco signed as she pointed to the tailless cat. We'll get you a kitty like that, I said. Is that okay? Good. Nice, Coco answered. How do you feel about kitties, I asked. Cat Gorilla, have visit, she signed. Coco love. Coco was ready for a new kitten, if only I could find one. More time went by. I called the Humane Society. They had no kittens at all, let alone a rare tailless manx. I called many other places and was disappointed again and again. I was told that not many kittens were born during that time of year. The worst part of this period was my feeling that I was letting Coco down. I'd watch as someone would ask Coco, where's your cat? And she would look around almost as if she was doing a double take, as if she were looking for ball. Then our luck changed. We received a letter from a breeder of Manx cats who wanted to help. He didn't have any kittens then, but he called other Manx breeders nearby until he located a litter of Manx kittens in Southern California. They were just about ready to leave their mother. We set the date for March 17th. The day before, I told Coco she was getting a new kitty, a red kitty. Red is Coco's favorite color. She was very excited. Then another delay. The breeder called. I'm sorry, he said. The kitten is not coming today. Coco was upset. I was disappointed. Trouble, she signed. We are having trouble getting you a new kitty. We have been trying very hard, I explained. Finally, on March 24th, a red tiger-striped Manx was brought to our home. Seeing the kitten, Coco purred with pleasure. It was a wonderful moment. She placed him on her chest and petted him. Let me hold the kitty, I said, but Coco would not let go. She kissed and cradled her kitten. Baby, she signed. Coco was happy. Her new kitten had come to stay. Epilogue. An epilogue tells additional information about what happens after the story is finished, or other things you may still have questions that you need answers to. It is found at the end of a book, after the main story has been told. Epilogue. Coco's family includes two other humans, Barbara Hiller and Ron Cohn, both officers of the Gorilla Foundation, and a male gorilla named Michael. Barbara, who is not shown in this picture, is one of Coco's oldest friends. 
Ron is a photographer who has documented Project Coco from the start. He has acted as a father figure to Coco and to Michael. Michael, who is two years younger than Coco, is like a brother to her. Michael has lived with us almost as long as Coco. Every day at the Gorilla Foundation, Michael and Coco go through a regular routine that includes language instruction, review, exercise, meals, and play. Coco and Michael share a trailer that has been expanded and remodeled to serve the needs of two gorillas. Each gorilla has a kitchen, a small bedroom, and a big playroom. Out back is a fenced-in yard where the gorillas exercise and play. My house is only 50 feet away. I am always there when they need me. Coco and Michael's education and care is provided through grants and contributions from members of the Gorilla Foundation. If you would like to help support this project, contributions may be sent to the Gorilla Foundation, P.O. Box 620-530, Woodside, California 94062.